eventually but this is what we got we got some steel hopefully it's steel but we got some steel tubing that you can use for like a whole bunch of products whole bunch of shit boys a little bit bigger than what i was originally would do but it's a good piece of metal you know it's one and a half inch it's more of like a rake rectangle but it's one and a half inch that way and it's one inch that way eight foot wide but that doesn't matter and it matches perfect with the frame because the razor frame is one and a half inch so that will look perfect right there i definitely planned that guys but yeah that's the middle we're going to be using we got this grinder milwaukee grinder and then we got the cheapest chicago electric welder that we could get at the local store boys so let's go ahead and get to step one of getting this Suron battery to fit in a Razor MX650 frame. To be completely honest, this is the first step. I'll show you here in just a second. We could stare at it some more, not gonna lie to you guys. I definitely did not have enough time to stare at it. But you know, we're just going as we go. So let's go ahead and start cutting shit. About to make our first cut, taking away this first battery tray, just this little L shape. We're gonna cut it right here and right there using this Milwaukee M18 fuel. Doesn't matter what grinder you got. This is the one I got. We got this Diablo metal cutoff blade, which was five bucks. It looks shitty, boys. I feel like it's gonna explode super quick. But yeah, we're not gonna mark anything. We're just gonna Put it up there and hopefully it cuts. Shit ton of power right there. 9,000 RPM, boys. Shit, boys. See, that's where a bigger cutoff wheel comes in clutch. But you know, we got the safety guard in there, so it's safe. Because we're safe, boys. Boom, that piece is cut off. Now we're gonna go straight to this one. You guys want to know a double use for a Milwaukee battery? You know, this is why it looks so bad. It's a perfect hammer, boys. So we just cut that off, that little battery tray, just so we can clear up some room in there. Because where, where's that battery at? Because that battery's going to take a lot of room up in there. So we just cleared that up. And we you know we didn't cut that off like super nicely as, as you can kind of tell But that's not an issue boys because we're just gonna be using a sand disc which will Clean that up super nicely and eventually once it's painted you won't even tell that that's there You know, this is a cut off wheel used to cut metal This just sands it down makes it flush just kind of does a lot of things boys we're gonna sand this one down a little bit and go ahead and and cut these off see there but I cut into I cut into this quite a bit so you want to make sure that you do it nice and flush because if you're gonna reuse this which I think we might you know I'm not too sure but yeah you don't want to be doing that because we just freaking murk that I told you guys these were five dollar discs already exploded and I wasn't wearing a face mask and you know it didn't explode that hard but I felt little pieces on my face so yeah that's what five dollars in a disc gets you guys I was able to cut one two 
three pieces of metal. Five bucks. Time for the new one. Son of a bitch. We got all that cleared up just kind of up and out of the way so we can get a better idea and I've been thinking about it and it's gotten me nowhere to be honest so I've stopped thinking about it not even gonna lie but I'm thinking we're gonna have to split this in half extend this down a little bit but we're gonna get to that point later first we're gonna be taking this square tubing and we're going to be making like a square notch in this. So it's going to go down, be a square, so we can slide our battery in there. Is the first thing we're going to be doing. So we're going to take this square tube in. We're going to get all the measurements of this battery. Make a square box without putting it on the bike at first. And once we got that metal square shape, we're then going to cut right here and install it. And well just kind of like not eyeballing it but eyeballing it it's about like what six and a half inches you know it might be six and a quarter but I'm cutting it at six and a half I'm making a six and a half box by five inches it looks like boys yeah let me double check this actually it's more about like five and a half inches so it's six and a half by five and a half we need to make this square tube in oh six inches on this you know if anything I'm gonna use that foam like I'm saying and we'll get it tight with foam but at five and a half I think it's not gonna fit like I think this is five and a three quarters this way is what I'm thinking so I'm gonna just make an even number go six inches by six and a half and I think that should work pretty good we have to add onto that number so we can get the metal to be longer on both sides so we can weld a nice box on there so we're going to be adding just an inch on both sides so this is six and a half so we're going to be cutting that eight and a half for quick math pieces cut I did not cut them super straight because of that angle I was at but you know I did that on purpose just so I could show you guys that you don't need like super precise tools and shit to get like super nice cuts and shit you can just use a grinder and cut it right but you don't even have to do that either if you don't want to and then I also cut the metal a little long nonetheless but the metals cut and I'm kind of just mocking it up with this stock battery. You know, this isn't going to be the battery for the final product. We will have a 72 volt battery in there. But this, this is enough. You know, this is a stock Suron battery that fits in the Suron and the upgraded batteries also fit in the Suron. So if we mock it up with this, once we get the other battery, it will fit, right? But yeah, these are the sides I made a little too long. You know, I added two inches and I was supposed to minus two inches just so we can fit that inside of right here and essentially weld that is what we got going on so we need to cut these two these two pieces need to be cut down two inches to fit in there which will make them exactly four inches all right boys so it's the next day phone died but we're just getting to the welding part now and I gotta say I'm not proud of the design I'm doing right now like just with this box you know I could make this look a lot better but I was thinking I was gonna make it easier 
and not have to show you guys how to cut an angle and shit. But I literally, like off this four inch piece right here, it was eight inches at first. So I literally could have just cut an angle and had a super smooth line. But nonetheless, we can always just patch this. We just put a piece of metal right there, weld it. And at the end of the day, it will look like a square box. But yeah, boys, we're going to go ahead and get this welded. Couple tips. When you start your weld, you want like a little gap right here. You don't want it like super tight. And that's about it. You know, I'm not my a best welder. This is my second time. Not going to lie to you guys. So I don't trust my welding skills. But we're going to go ahead and just try to get it done, boys. Alright boys, so I did not have my mic plugged in, so you couldn't really hear me welding, but we got it welded up. Definitely could have been done better, but it's a square, it fits the battery nonetheless. And now we're going to go ahead and get this cut up to get this welded up in there. And originally I was thinking I was just going to put it in like that. I don't know what I was thinking. So now we're just going to have to cut it grab that tubing over there extend it down and kind of hook it up like that so this square piece is straight and somehow connect it back to this so we're also going to have to cut out our old suspension as well so we're going to cut that out cut this in half basically cut some of that and weld it all together
all right boys so the phone kept dying but we got the box welded up in there and it is looking good it's making me want to not get big tires but the big tires definitely gonna make it look super aggressive but it's welded up in there looking pretty nice boys it's so I was thinking we were gonna have to cut this and extend this down just so we had more clearance up here but I think this is pretty good boys you know I think we're gonna have like a little latch or something that goes down for the seat still not sure what seat I'm gonna use or anything at all yet you know if you have any ideas on a seat that's probably gonna cover it a little bit not too sure I think the next step though is to throw on the Saron suspension just the front for now so we can get an idea of how the bike's gonna sit so that's gonna be for part three putting Saron suspension on the bike and after that we're probably gonna go probably the swing arm or some shit not too sure but I do think this upper subframe all right here is gonna go we're just gonna make it boxy and just completely change this rear end is what I think we're gonna be doing because I'm thinking we're gonna be putting the controller underneath the subframe or frame whatever you want to call it but probably up and underneath the seat is what I'm thinking motors gonna go right here gonna have to do something crazy with the swing arm to make it work and then we got sheet metals to completely cover this up so like you won't even see this box at the end of this build you shouldn't even be able to see that but I don't know guys leave any comments on what parts I should get and just what you think and I'll catch you guys for part three